a couple of do's and don'ts to drill down on that. We had a little fun here with these do's and don'ts. We're talking about your launch day now. And uh, actually, you could make these do's and don'ts apply pretty much to every Sunday in your church. But here's just some things. Uh, do serve fresh Krispy Kreme donuts. But don't serve day-old, store-bought anything. Yeah. So if you're going to do refreshments, do it really well. That's what we're talking about. If you're going to do refreshments, you know, make them fresh. Uh, do offer uh, sweet, salty, and healthy foods. And don't offer small portions. You know what I'm talking about? You go, you go to the, uh, the refreshment area, and they have them out on plates, and it's about this big, and you have to put four or five on your plate just to fill you up. Give big portions. People like that. Yeah, this is if you're doing refreshments, you know. Uh, do offer brand name drinks. You know, don't offer Sam's Choice. I mean, what does that say about your church, you know? Oh, yeah, I want to go to that church because they are Sam's Choice, you know. And we're going to have a dog party and serve Old Roy, you know. That's what we're going to do. Um, offer water uh, if, if you can. Um, put smiling people out to serve. Don't let your team eat all of the food before <laughs> the people arrive. Yeah. Uh, don't have a sign that just says the water fountain's down the hall. That's what that other one's about. Uh, that's smiling people out to serve. That's just a great tip. Like uh, I used to try to get people and try to train them to smile. Now I get smiling people and just put them to work. It's a nice little shortcut, you know. And uh, so put your smiling people out front. You know what I've learned about greeters? Don't ever let them volunteer. Because the, the people who haven't smiled in years and who are missing their two front teeth will volunteer to be your greeters. So I don't put them out there. You go get smiling people to, to serve. Um, if you do food, provide it for your setup team and then provide enough food uh, uh, as you do that. You know, you don't have to do food. It's just uh, I think food is sort of a first impression that a lot of churches miss. And, and I've gone to churches where they've taken a, a muffin and they've cut it into, you know, sixteenths or whatever. <laughs> And then they've got a, a little scowling lady or, or guy working the refreshment table, and he's like, no seconds. You know, and I'm like, what, you know, okay, how's that, what does that say about grace? We take food seriously. Um, and we'll, 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 we make the joke that uh, we imagine um, somebody that gets up in the morning, uh, a big guy, he gets up in the morning, opens his cupboard, and realizes he's out of food and thinks, well, I might as well go to church because they have food there. They might get enough to eat. So Yeah, right. A uh, few other thoughts here. Uh, set up your room so it feels full. Let me just deal with this. Uh, I, I may have missed it. Uh, I look out and, and I, I see a lot of people here who I know know a lot about church growth. Uh, and uh, some of you have been friends of mine and you've mentored me. And I've done my best to, to study, you know, all the classic church growth stuff, all the stuff on church planting. I've tried to read it all. And I don't know where the idea of critical mass comes from. But there's sort of this thing out there about, well, a room has to have critical mass. Look, critical mass is how you make the room feel. I, I can take uh, 50 people and put them in a room of 400 and make it feel like it's full. You know, I just do that by blocking off the back half or something like that. So, you know, this critical mass thing, well, we don't have critical mass. Well, you know, how, what does that even mean? I can't even define find that in, in church growth theory. So what, however you set up your room, make it feel full. And, you know, uh, uh, there's also some, uh, some theory out there about bringing chairs in. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I used to do a whole thing a long time ago in a, in a coaching network called Chairology. And uh, it was like this uh, theology of how you do chairs. And somebody had said, well, what you do, if you're expecting 100 people, you set up like 80 chairs. You know, and then when those extra 20 come in, you bring in those chairs. Well, that may look really good for your people to say, wow, we had to bring in chairs today. But you know what it makes the person in the back think? It makes them think, number one, they, they feel really awkward. Like the guy has to go get me a chair. Nobody likes to have to go get a chair. Number two is, it's like, did they not expect that I was coming today? I mean, what kind of small-minded church is this that they thought, you know, they, they, didn't, they weren't even expecting me. So maybe next week I'll go to somebody's church that is. So be careful about these things like critical mass and bringing in chairs and all that. You know, early on, if you're surprised... Back in September, October, November, December, and you need to bring in some chairs, that's great. But by the time you get to your lunch date and afterwards, you should have plenty of room. And, and the rule on this is 70%. Uh, if you think, uh, you know, the, the room is going to be at a certain level, add an extra 30% to that so that you're, you're ready to go. Because the, most rooms feel about full at 70%. So be careful with that. The second one's important. Keep the service to one hour. At the Journey, we have a 65-minute service, and we time it, and we end right at 65 minutes. You know, people come into church, especially the unchurched, they're not used to being in anywhere for that period of time. So, you know, keep, keep it at, at a manageable length. Uh, the difference between an hour 15 service and an hour 5 service is transitions. It has nothing to do with content or, or, or the ability to effectively communicate the gospel. 
Um, receive an offering. We've already talked about that a number of times. Meet as many people as possible at your launch. Now, that's sort of a, a, a double-edged sword. I don't want to create the pastor handshake line. Yeah, you ever done that? You know, the, you, there's one exit and the pastor stands at the door and he's shaking everybody's hand. You know, uh, that's really weird to unchurch people. Plus, like, we're, we're in a germaphobic society of shaking hands and all of this. Uh, instead, you know, let people exit out all the doors but have a place where you're going to be and meet people. And, uh, you know, in, in New York, in New York City uh, especially, you know, uh, shaking hands can be an overt act of aggression. You know, uh, <laughs> eye contact is, is strong enough, you know, in the city. So uh, just be careful with how, how you work this out. Uh, but try to meet as many people as you can. You can do that in the, in the five minutes before the service. Like once the church gets larger, you, you, you won't be able to go out and meet everybody. But you can just kind of mill around and wave at people and say hello and tell them who you are and make sure they're glad. So try to meet as many as you can. And at this point in your church's life, you'll have a lot of people serving who are new to your church. Make it, uh, make it a point to go around and to thank every volunteer. And you can do that at that stage where you go by and just thank them, get to know their names. That will make a big difference. And then uh, the wrap up this little section is um, be ready for the Sunday after your launch. Uh, I, I made this joke yesterday, I'll make it again, you know. You get six months to plan your first service, and then you get six days to plan your second weekly service. Now, the great thing about the preview services is it helps you get your systems in place. Because doing these monthly services, you have an opportunity. But still, it's a pretty shocking day after you pull off that launch, and then to turn around and realize you've got to do another one of these in six days. And uh, if you cut out all the stuff we talked about, like small groups and membership, and you wait on all of those things, and you only develop the first-year systems we're going to talk about after lunch, it'll lower the stress level some. But it's still, it, it's quite a deal to have to provide a service every week. That's right. I love what uh, NFL quarterback Roger Starbuck said. He said, spectacular achievements come from unspectacular preparation. It's the small things that you do in preparation for your launch that's going to make all the difference.